Hello and uh, welcome back if you've been watching my other videos that I've made, in particular the uh, one I made just before Halloween last year where I looked through my um, DPP 39 collection. At that point I um, had most of the DP 39 videos but some of them were on Betamax, some of them were on, well one of them was on V2000. Since then I've um, managed to get all of the DPP 39 videos on VHS. I've also got a few um, variants and things like that and as well as that I've been slowly collecting the rest of the 72. I think I'm about five away now from completing the 72. The five I need are Don't Go In The House, Kill A Nun, The Living Dead, uh, Women Behind Bars which is going to be the, the most tricky one and um, one other one. What's the other one I need to get? Living Dead, Killer Nun, Don't Go In The House, Remember, and, and The Beyond, which should, should be, shouldn't be too hard to get. So initially when I started out I was just going to try and get the 39. Um, having got those, I you know I thought well, I might as well carry on and get a few more, try and get the, the complete set of the 72. So people, who, anyone watching this who um, don't really know the full story, back in the uh, uh, late 70s early 80s when video first came out it was classed as a publishing medium which meant that all these um, kind of independent video companies started springing up out of nowhere and they started to um, release any sort of film onto video uh, there's no regulations at that point so because it was classed as a pub pub publishing medium the same as like books and stuff were um, because of some of these certain titles that are coming out um the the government and various um uh busy bodies whether we call them like mary whitehouse started to take um offense to these these titles and so they went to the police and the department of public prosecutions who under section two of the publications act tried to um take some of these titles to court and um, prosecute them under the obscene publications act which is section two of the, that act um, over time, over the, f the years, a um, couple of years or so that it was happening, the list kind of changed and some titles were added, some titles were dropped, some titles were successfully prosecuted, some weren't. Um, the, the full list kind of ended up sort of settling around 72 titles. Um, out of those 72 titles which went to court, 39 were found obscene. So that they make up the DPP 39, the ones which were found to be obscene. Whereas the rest of them, the other 33 or whatever the, the other number is, they were they just make up the rest of the 72. Um, on top of that as well, there's the section three list. I think someone mentioned in the comments after my last video. I, did I have any section three videos? This was a, another list um, put together by the DPP of films which could be um, found obscene and, and might be problematic, but never actually went to court. So um, to answer whoever asked that question before, I do have a few um, Section 3 titles. I've got a few up there. My, uh, my most favourite favorite one really is Wrong Way. Show that down there. That's quite a good one to get. Um, it would come in this kind of oversized, this, this would uh, normally, this originally was a um, oversized like card box, um, but this has been cut down. And there's a tape inside there, so that's quite a quite a rare one to get. So I think it'd be like a large size box, and inside would be a video case. Um, but a lot of the time, it, these were sort of cut down, and this is all I've all I've managed to pick up was just this kind of cut down one. But it's still quite a rare, quite a hard tape to get. So that's quite a cool one from section three. So going over what I've got since I made the last video. So. I'm going to just focus on the 39 because if I go into the 72 as well I'm going to be here for a while and I don't want to make this video too long although it probably end up, will end up being quite long. Um, so starting at the top going along here I have got this copy of the burning. So I've got two copies of the burning. Last time I just had this one and now I've got this one. So what's the difference? So if I go here, so the main difference between these two is this one, the one I had before, has the date on it, has the 24th of November 1982, just stamped on there, and this other one has no date on it. 
So initially, EMI put out the film with the uncut cinema version on it. No, the no, they had there was a BBFC approved cinema version, and when they released their their film, they were meant to put out, or they said they were meant to put out the cut version, which was BBFC, BBFC approved for the cinema. By mistake, according to them, they accidentally put out the uncut version. And so when they started to get in trouble with the um, DPP, they asked video shops to send back the uncut version so they can record over it with the cut version. So if your copy of the tape looks like this and hasn't got a date stamp on it, then it is the uncut version and worth a bit more than the version like this with the date stamp on. So they're basically identical apart from the fact that this has been recorded over with the cut version. There's also another version out there which has like a blue, like a slightly blue um, top label. That was a later on um, cut version where they when they re-released it again later on down the line. So that's quite a nice little one. So again, it's quite a nice, nice uh, condition copy I've got there. Like I say, it's very similar to what happened with zombie flesh eaters. So you've got, I've now picked up a second version of Zombie Flesh Eaters, so I'll show it down there. So this one is the uncut version, is the cut version, and this one, which has a sticker on saying strong uncut version, is the, the um, uncut version. So again, on the tapes themselves, so this is a nice, very nice clean copy of the um, cut version, which has no um, stamp on it, whereas the strong uncut version has the stamp on it saying strong cut version. So basically, Mike Lee, this is like this is the opposite to what EMI did. So Mike Lee from Vipco, he initially put out the cut version, um, the BBFC approved cut version. Then when he found out that he didn't actually need to get a certificate because he could put it out in an uncut release, uncut, uncut version because there's no regulation, he then started doing, I don't know if he recalled the cut versions, but he's then started putting out that there's the same title, same sleeve and everything, but then started using the uncut print and he just put the sticker on there and then stamped the top label saying that it was the strong uncut version. So that's quite nice to have both of those. Down there. So going along here, I've now got Cannibal Holocaust on VHS. Yes, yeah, so there's a nice VHS copy of that one. Um, it's got the, the gold side label as well. So before I just had it on Betamax, but now I managed to pick up this slight, slight bit of fade into the front cover. Um, but the, the back, the side and the back are both very nice condition. Um, got this quite cheap because the guy that I brought it from, when he tried playing it, he got it stuck in his machine. And so he initially was like, you know, do I do I still want it? Because it got stuck in the machine, he had to take his machine apart to get it out. And I said, well, you know, I'll, st I'll still be interested in it because I might be able to get it to work. So he sold it to me for like half what he was originally asking for. After I got it back, I ran it through a, a, a spare machine I have. I think where the tape was old, it um, the, the reels had just started to, to kind of dry out a bit and stick together. And so after I run it through my, my machine a few times and... Um, using some um, uh, rubbing alcohol on it to try and um, kind of loosen up the reels. It now plays fine. So very pleased with that because that's normally quite a quite a highly um, pr prized tape that normally goes for quite a lot. Although it is quite a common tape so um, shouldn't really go for what it does but I think it's quite a desirable one. So that's quite nice. That's nice that I've now um, made that in um, Transfer that over to from Betamax to to VHS. The same with actually another. I've got another thing down here. Another Go release, which is um, try again, which is SS Experiment Camp. So I'll show you that here. So this one is also on VHS. So very similar again with a uh, the gold side label on there. So you can sort of see how the the top labels on both are very similar. Oop. That which just fell out of there 
it is quite a nice little um, addition that came with it, which is this little rental card. So, I'll show that there. so that is, I don't know if you can see that very well, but on there that basically has all the dates and it goes over to two two sides there. So there's another side, I don't know if you can see that on there. You see it better on that one. Um, but it basically has all the, the dates that this title was rented out from Head Row Video Library Limited. So there you go, so that's a nice piece of history included with that one. Um, right, what else have I got? The Holocaust, what's going on here? Big title, Big title. managed to get this on VHS, whereas before I had a V2000 copy, which I've since sold. Um, but this is The Devil Hunter, the Jess Franco film. As you remember before, if you've seen my, my previous video, I just had a, an original cut down sleeve. This is a complete sleeve. I'm going over to here. So you can see the, got all the sides to it. On the back, it's got the uh, all important VPD video sticker. This one's in white. It's more, more common to see it in blue. So the white ones doesn't kind of show up as, as often as, as the blue ones. But it's important that it is a sticker. I think that they, this was put on there when um, the, the, the tapes were brought over into the UK and Video Programme Distribution Limited uh, were responsible for distributing it in the UK. So they were using the same Cine Hollywood sleeves that you had on like other foreign releases, but they would just put their sticker on the back. Again, so got the tape inside. Is a very nice copy actually. It's got the side label as well. As you can see this is actually an original Cine Hollywood box. You can tell it's an original one because it's all broken up. These boxes are notoriously fragile, so they're incredibly they're incredibly thin, brittle plastic. Um, so to try and get one in like a good condition. So this one isn't a good condition, but you know even if you pick one up now, which is complete, and you get it posted over to you it can end up get turned up broken so but this one I mean it's good enough it's good enough but it's nice to get that that's probably one of my most prized um, video nasties now so going down here we have got another big hitter which is expose so last time I just had a tape only with a reproduction box this one is an original box to a certain degree. So I take it out. So this is a different tape because the previous tape I had only had the top label. Whereas this one's got the top label and the side label on there. That's nice. Um, but the box, all that's left of this box is the front and back panels. So I put it on there. So that's the front panel. And the little bit that's on the inside of the man's face on and the back part so normally so originally this was like a, a kind of it's called like a gatefold um so it would be like a kind of a box that that would slide into and then this kind of be like a top flap but quite more often than not these were cut down normally like a three sider this one's just a two sider um someone was asking about these as well these plastic um uh, display boxes that i have and ask them where I get them from. Um, I don't actually know who originally made these. Um, at the moment I just get them from other collectors, so other people who have them. I got the feeling that some collectors um, probably found a company that were producing plastic boxes like this or, or, or could produce like display cases for things and they may have like clubbed together and did like a big order where they got the, the specifications for these these size boxes and got this company to do like manufacture a load of them because um i don't know i don't you can't really there's no real, real shop that sells them online or anywhere like that you just pick them up from other collectors that seem to have picked them up over the years probably from like the original big order that went out um alternatively you can still get these kind of like plastic, um, like kind of like plasticky C3 ones. I've got this prisoner. They kind of kind of got in. Um, these are available on eBay. There's like two sizes. I think this is a slightly larger size one. 
Um, is this the larger size? Yeah, I think this might be the, the smaller size one, but yeah, so you can you can still buy these. There's still companies that make these, but um, as for the hard plastic ones, I don't think there's a company that makes them anymore. I think it might just have been a like a one-off sort of run of them. So going along here, what have I got? Forest of Fear. Um, I think last time mine had a slightly trim sleeve, but also it wasn't in a gold Monty box. But this one is now in a gold Monty box. These are very hard to get hold of. These Monty boxes. Um, so I'm quite pleased to get that. that kind of like getting that getting a box for the with the tape kind of like help in my mind sort of completes the package. Um, so that's quite nice. So going along here, I've got the video gems release of Frankenstein now. So I'll show you. So there was two companies. There was Vipco and there was Video Gems that put out Frankenstein in the UK. So it's like there. And then that's the tape. Um, one thing you have to look out for on these ones though is that there was the US release is identical to the UK release. Um, they use the same boxes and everything. The only only difference is when you play the tape, it plays back in NTSC or PAL. So if it plays back in PAL, so if you've got NTSC playback on your VCR, then you probably won't really notice the difference. But if, if you don't and you play a, a US tape, it plays back in black and white, I believe. Um, but other than that, it's very hard to tell the difference between the two. I think this is US, U, um, UK, sorry. Um, what's interesting about this, this box is that the sleeve is kind of like cut into three sections and sealed into three different parts of the box. So if you ever get a copy and it's just like a, a normal sleeve in a box, then it's most likely a, uh, well it will be, a uh, bootleg or a, or a reproduction. So these were originally sealed like this, so the spine and the back part, and each one's kind of sealed inside. And yeah, so that's that. Video Gems release of Frankenstein. And then I've got, because last time I had the tape, but not a complete sleeve, I just had the front part, but now I've got a complete sleeve for Gestapo's last orgy on VFP. Um, bit of damage to the top of the sleeve there, but you know what, I'm happy with that. One thing I didn't mention before was how you get two different types of sleeve for this on the uh, VFP release. So you get one which looks like this, which has this writing on the back, and you have another one which has the word warning. So the original sleeve had the word warning on the back and more um uh more kind of like sensationalist writing in order to try and turn it tone it down a bit they seem to have like printed off this little um piece of paper and stuck it over it so this one so that's actually a piece of paper stuck on top of the original words so you can see the original bits of the um what it originally said underneath and then they've um printed off this this and stuck it on top. So, so there's, there, I think there's just those two ver um, variations between that sleeve, and then obviously there's the uh, Video Shack release, which is um, quite hard to come by. Well, probably you know incredibly hard to come by. Probably the the most rarest of all the Video Nasties is the Video Shack release. But there we go. So that's my Gestapo's last orgy on uh, on VHS with the complete sleeve. Going on here, we've got this, which is Love Camp 7 on Market Video. So this is the harder to get of the two releases. So the other release is the Abbey release, which is a bit more common. And then you've got this one here, which is on the market, market label. Um, so standard kind of like sleeve that's what the back looks like and then top label same with like um vfp releases the top label this gets the kind of like glue seepage going through which kind of like causes that sort of effect on there 
but it's a good sign if you've got the glue seepage because that's normally an indication that that's an, uh, an original um like i said quite quite a quite a, a rare one to get a hold of so that's nice to get that um, what else have i picked up along the way i think um well, apart from werewolf and the yeti so i've now got werewolf and the yeti on vhs as well there we go so say it pretty same kind of label and stuff that you had on the betamax but now it's a vhs release of it so that is all of the uh, the 39 on uh on vhs oh no but another one that i picked up as well is is uh, i had tenebrae before but it was a uh not a very top of the range um copy of it so this one this one i picked up is actually really nice it's um really nice condition and the original um video media box as well which is nice so that was like an like an upgrade um yeah i think that's it i think that's 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 all the uh all the upgrades i've picked up over since since october last year and also like i said i've been picking up the um the other ones from the 72 so i've got the bogeyman cannibal terror um, contamination dead and buried death trap deep river savages delirium don't go near the park don't look in the basement evil dead evil speak actually evil speaks 39 isn't it um forest uh, frozen scream fun house human experiments i miss you hugs and kisses this is, this is quite a good one this is from um so one of those titles that you think you know how what, how on earth did that end up on the video nazis list it's called i miss you i miss you hugs and kisses and if anybody's actually seen the film apparently it's not even that that um that bad it's just like it's like a tv drama or something but it's it's quite a hard one to get a hold of because it's inter intercity video all i think all of those are quite hard to get a hold of but um this one has an intercity video box as well they're quite hard to come by it's a bit it's kind of a bit rough around the edges but it's one of those ones i've not owned one of these before so that's quite nice to get hold of that, that's from the 72 that's not part of the 39 um but that's it really that's an update um something else i've got here. i've also got like i said i'll probably do like another video looking at the other 33 from the from the um the, the the full 72 list but i've got possession and i've got these both releases of that so that's the more common one and this is the one with the kind of backwards um sleeve design which is very strange so the normal one looks like this and then this one the sleeve is like in reverse for some reason so you've got that little side bit and then that on the back there so there that's quite a nice uh, nice pair to get that's it really so hopefully um when i do this video again in a few months time um i will have all 72 on there maybe a few more variants um but in the meantime thank you very much for watching these vi these videos i'm not the most uh the gracious host for these sort of things so but um you know i appreciate people watching this and i appreciate um people um commenting and stuff and um leaving feedback and also i still have copies of the uh vhs forever dvd which i've got a link in uh in the description below if you want to get that off of ebay for i'm, I'm doing it selling for like two quid each now i've still got loads of less left so um you know grab one of those they're they're quite an interesting little documentary about the uh the history of um vhs collecting so until next time thank you very much again and uh stay safe